Hello again and welcome to part three of this series of videos on a 20 meter mini beam build, or hopefully the final part. If you missed parts one and two, there's a link above to part one if you follow that, and then there's links to two and then back to three here, so you won't miss out. Uh, in this video, we finish the tuning and, uh, and do some on-air tests. So having tuned the dipole, we now need to tune the reflector and it needs to be 5% lower in frequency. So I made that 5% longer it's on the same element at the moment, so the same connection. Um, Five percent longer it was just a little bit too short. Fourteen point two megahertz is thirteen point five, which as you can see is there. But when I bring it down, you'll just see uh, how much I had to add on. So you can see. Um, 5% physically longer was there and I've had to add this little second to get the tune um, because of the telescopic nature of the pole uh, it doesn't actually reach 3 metres uh, 3 metres uh, sorry the pole ends there 3 metres is actually there so you can see uh, a 3 metre pole would have been spot on if it was 3 metres so perhaps you need a 4 metre pole uh, and then just chop the end off so I've had to put in a um, I don't know what that is. It's a kebab stick, I think. Uh, and even that's quite heavy for this little end. Uh, it's quite thin uh, and that weird. When I applied these poles, I bought these as fiberglass poles and were advertised as fiberglass poles. I'm beginning to think this black section might be carbon because the tune uh, in terms of resonance was the same as with the bamboo canes, um, but the uh, SWR was a little bit higher. Um, so uh, despite checking and you think anyone advertising a fission pole would be keen to promote the fact part of its carbon uh, this was advertised as a glass fibre pole so reflector element there I'll just show you the, the middle you just temporarily connect that on there now when this becomes a reflector on the other element these are just soldered together so uh, that gap um, about two and a half centimetres an inch uh, I haven't taken that into account. Whether that matters so much, I'm not sure. So this is the first time the beam's been fully up. Uh, I've left the reflector ends just dangling. Um, I'll try and figure out something for that later. Uh, here we are. Excuse the brush. And here we go. Uh, where's that? About 1.15. And if we take one and a half to two two sixty either end zero fifty. So it's dropped a little bit but uh, I can easily tune that in with the uh, the rig tuner. So folded up, this is what it folds down to. It's very small. Um, if you imagine that end, uh, that cane not being there, but actually folded fully in. Um, really small indeed. So even though I made these so they would unbolt, because originally the garden canes were going to be full length, uh, now with telescopic, uh, easy storage, uh, and very lightweight indeed. And on the reflector end, I bridged that gap in the middle uh, with an equivalent length piece of wire uh, to match the dipole end. And so this is the, uh, the reflector end all, all packed up. And just to add, uh, out of interest, when I swapped over the poles from bamboo to fiberglass, I rewound the coils. I added another four turns and took them to 40 turns. And you can see here that increased the reading to 4.5 microhenries uh, from 4.2ish. Uh, I thought this would reduce the length of the outer arms, but uh, it didn't have much uh, much difference actually. So I went back to, to 36 turns in the end. So for on-air tests, we're now around the back garden. The portable mast is 7 metres high. The off-centre of a dipole I'm going to compare with there is about 10 in the middle and 11 at the end. So here we are in the shack. Um, I've brought in the rotator controller. Uh, that's the... SWR curve that the rig can see. The green mark on the right is 2, 14 to 80 
uh, and the dip is around 14130 um, so I could shorten the Yagi slightly uh, just to get that that dip further up um, so here we are uh, I've <laughs> I don't know if we need this with dipoles but uh, I've got the uh, the uh, direction map uh, ready uh, for pointing the beam the band is pretty poor uh, there's a chap here he's um, oh, I've just lost that so if I bring that back in again he's in uh, Kazakhstan uh, so we can see whereabouts he is and if I zoom out there so you'll see the difference between the between the offset of a dipole and the Yagi. This is the Yagi. That's a dipole. Yagi. Dipole. It's a lot louder. You can see the Paphos station better on the dipole because I'm not pointing in his direction. There's Kazakhstan, Dipole, Yagi. Uh, the band conditions are dropping, you can see just while we've been recording. Uh, there's the peak and now it's lowering. Um, a two element Yagi uh, doesn't have the, the biggest front to back rejection. Uh, there's still a lobe on the back, but you do get uh, the nulls on the side. So I've pointed 90 degrees away. So we get him on the on the dipole. There he is. Weaker, stronger, weaker on the beam, stronger on the dipole. Golf zero, Charlie. November, November. Golf zero, Charlie. November, November. Uh, Charlie November November Charlie November November Golf Zero Charlie November November Roger 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 Rafa you're also five seven uh, nice to work here for the first time and enjoy the pile up seven three so you have stumbled across a Canadian station He's very weak on the beam. Just there on the beam in the peaks, uh, not on the dipole. Dipole. Beam. 
ferry uh, talking to Jeff in Orkney's. There's the Yagi. Sorry, the Dark Paul. There's the beam. Dark Paul. The beam's just got the edge. So with the design and build, uh, once you get to the end, it'd be easy to build it for the second time, but obviously you've learned uh, lessons along the way. You could see I was trying to keep the cost down. Uh, the boom could be uh, something different in your case, wood, uh, box aluminium, you can buy three meter lengths online. Uh, I even saw some H-shaped aluminium sections in my local uh, DIY shop. Uh, so um, there are options on the build. So as you saw in my tests of my version, the dipole's higher and in the clear. Uh, the Yagi was about three metres lower uh, and, and jostling with the house. Uh, on the ends of the dipole you could see the Yagi was better. Uh, in terms of other directions there was a bit of a plus and minus. It was marginal in some cases uh, and equal in others. Uh, and obviously you can reject noise if noise is an issue off another station. Uh, so I think we saw about one S point uh, of benefit in terms of gain uh, when conditions were right. And we saw the design had a 200 kilohertz bandwidth at 1.5 SWR either side. So the antenna works well. It compared favourably to my 40 meter off centre fed dipole working on 20. So there'd be peaks and lobes with that setup. And the, the Yagi was lower as well. Uh, the interesting thing to think about is the Yagi is only uh, 6 metres wide, 20 feet. Uh, a 20 metre dipole is 10 metres, 32 feet. So you could actually fit this into a smaller space uh, than, a, than a dipole. Uh, you don't need a rotator, you could just lash it to a fence uh, and point it in any given direction, be it America, Europe, so on. Uh, you could also just make the dipole element itself without the reflector. Uh, and have a fixed or a rotary dipole set up. So uh, good few options there. So my thanks to both Lenny M0KOM and Fred G1DFN for putting me onto this uh, design. Uh, I've added a diagram here to give you some approximate dimensions, but as you've seen, things will vary. Uh, if you uh, take on the project, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find the, uh, the Yagi useful. If you like this project, uh, there are other uh, videos on this channel and there will be more to come, so please like and subscribe and ring the bell uh, so you get to know of future videos when they're released. Uh, 73.